This is a terrorist. Here you can see this magnificent creature in its natural habitat, socializing with its relatives. But at this time of the year, it's hunting season. So the terrorist stocks up on weapons, explosives and ammunition to venture out into the wilds and blow some shit up. It moves fast and graciously with only a knife in its hand, but it instinctively knows when to assume a more vigilant stance, because around the corner, its natural enemy is already approaching. The counter-terrorist. When those two predators clash, shit hits the fan. We all know this, right? After endless sessions of DE Dust, you instinctively know that usually the action starts here and here. And this is also where about 70% of the firefights take place. These locations are what the level designer calls choke spots, or choke points, or control points, or bottlenecks. No matter what you call them, they're a very powerful tool for a map designer to orchestrate the entire flow, pacing, balance, and overall gameplay styles on a map. Choke spots are usually locations where the architecture of the map narrows the flow down to a concentrated area with only one or few viewable entrances. And they are located in a way that by dominating a choke spot, a team gains a strategic advantage because it gets access to flanking opportunities to the other choke points. Especially in a symmetrical shooter like Counter-Strike, where both teams start at the same time, their deliberate placement is crucial. Let's take a look at how long it takes two opposing players to rush both choke spots on dust. So, point alpha takes 11 seconds, and point beta 12 seconds. As you can see, both closest contact points are very equally distributed between the teams and lie exactly in the choke spots. Because if they were not, one team would have access to a dominant strategy simply by rushing that choke spot each round. Of course, this works in other games and game modes too. For example, take a look at the subway section of Battlefield 3's Metro map. It has about 4 to 5 bottlenecks. Here. 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 And maybe this one too. Notice that, because the spawn points in Battlefield are dynamic, the exact placements of the choke points also shift and change throughout the course of the map. Breaking through one of those control points gives that team a huge advantage, because, yeah, flanking. No matter how good a marksman you are, an enemy that falls in your unprotected side or back will pretty much always overpower you. But back to Counter-Strike. What's equally important as the placement of the choke spot is the overall composition. Walls, entrances, obstacles, angles, cover, height difference. The layout of a choke spot works like a conductor for the map's playstyle, and a well-designed map embraces different tactics throughout its bottleneck design. Tight and cramped spaces give long-range players a hard time, while making cheaper weapons like submachine guns and shotguns a viable option. Open spaces and long corridors, on the other hand, encourage sniping, but I guess that's kind of obvious. When you design a map, combine these techniques cleverly in your map design to direct the way you want your map to be played. You can even encourage team play with that. For instance, spot A on dust is a very CQC heavy area where snipers generally don't have such a great time. But the bomb spot right behind it is designed in a way that it can be defended perfectly with a long range weapon. The defendant has boxes and balustrades for cover and can keep an eye on both entries at the same time from a distance, while the attackers are completely exposed. It's no coincidence that Choke Spot A is designed to be a nightmare for snipers, because it encourages team play strategies where, for example, a handful of CQC specialists protect and guide a skilled sniper towards that bomb spot. Minor changes in the layout can have a huge impact on the gameplay. For example, just put a box here and the bomb spot would become way harder to defend with snipers. Or think about the subtle change this map has undergone in the transition to global offensive. Because have you noticed that the designers implemented another choke spot? It's the stairway that leads upwards from the underpass, right before choke spot beta. Both teams can reach it in the same time with virtually no resistance, and it's a very tight and cramped CQC spot that encourages short to medium range weaponry. 
But when the terrorists gain the upper hand, they give a sniper an excellent vantage point over the entirety of the otherwise close quarters oriented choke spot A. And if the counter terrorists overpower that spot, they can flank both control point beta and successively control point alpha by that. The map is still evenly balanced, but this subtle alteration changes the dynamics and viable playstyle options drastically. It just makes the gunfights a little more diverse. So as a map designer, control your choke spots and you can conduct the gameplay of your map. As a player, plan your strategy, loadout and team play around the strengths and weaknesses of the map's choke spots and your team will gain a significant tactical advantage so you can Crush your enemies, see them driven before you and hear the lamentation of their women. So before we wrap this up, here's a little uh, homework. Imagine we'd remove the wall from choke spot alpha so that you can see right through the arc that leads to the counter-terrorist start point. Which team would benefit more from this? And how would it affect the strategic gameplay on the map? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. So as always, thanks for watching, keep on playing, and I'll see you next time on Ragnaroks.